Hello there and welcome to the lesson on iterative sequences. First we're going to remind ourselves what sequences are, sort of strings of numbers. So pause the video and have a go at writing the next five terms in this set of sequences. Okay, so hopefully you've done that. Hopefully in the first sequence you spotted the pattern here. So there's a, always a pattern between the numbers in a sequence. The pattern this time is add two. So the next five terms will be 15, and then 17, then 19. I've done three here, 21 and 23. That'll be the answer to part A. The pattern in part B is not to do something each time you go up a number, it's the square numbers. You can see it's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. The next one will be 49. The next one will be 64. The next one will be 81, uh, 100. And then 121 is 11 squared. So there we are, that's the answer to part B. And then part C is to subtract 3 each time, so it would be 66, 63, 60, and the next one would be 57, and then 54. So those are the next five numbers in this sequence. Okay, so let's now move on to the notation part of iterative sequences. Let's take the sequence 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Now, if I want to label the fourth term in the sequence, I use the symbols x and then a little subscript 4. Now, that's not anything mathematical. You've seen more of this kind of notation in chemistry where you've got like H2O. The little 2 there would be a subscript. So it just means the fourth term in the sequence where of x numbers. So we've got x equals 3, first of all, x equals 5, first of all, x equals 7 next. Now, if I was just to label the fourth term in the sequence, the fourth term in this sequence would be 9. So it's kind of like writing the fourth term in the sequence of x equals numbers. So in this sequence, the fourth term is 9. If I wanted to find x6, this would refer to the sixth term in the sequence of x numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The answer to this question would be 13. Have a go at a few more questions then. Have a go at these four. Okay, so x1 refers to the first term in the sequence, so that would be the number 3. x2 refers to the second term in the sequence, that will refer to the number 5. The 3 refers to the third term in the sequence of x numbers, which is 7. And x9 would be the ninth term in the sequence. Uh, we've only got six so far, so I'll have to carry on the sequence. 15, 17, 19. 19 would be the answer to x9. So this little subscript here means the that number in the sequence of x numbers. It doesn't necessarily need to be the letter x. It could be a2, b2, u2, uh, w2 y2, z2, the x number is not really that important. The, the little number is the no important part of it, though. Um, that's referring to which term in the sequence you're at. Okay, so take this sequence here, and I'd like you to answer questions A to E, please. Okay, so x6 refers to the sixth term in the sequence, that would be the number 26. x2 would be 10, that's the second term in the sequence. x5 would be the fifth term in the sequence, 22. x1, 1 is always the first number in the sequence, 6. And then x8, but I'd have to carry on this a little bit, the pattern here is add 4, so that would be 30 and then 34, so the answer to x8 is 34. Okay, so in this type of sequence now, we're effectively given a formula to generate the numbers in the sequence. So what I'd like you to do now is have a go at questions A to E using this formula to generate the terms in the sequence. Okay, so for x6, 6 is effectively the n value, so in this part a, n is equal to 6. 
Now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to put 6 as the n value into the formula. So it'll be 3 times 6 is 18. 18 take away 2 is 16. 16 is the answer to part A. In question B, n is effectively the number 2. So I'll take the number 2, replace it for n in the formula. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. 4 is the answer to part B. In part C, n is effectively represented by the number 5. 5 here, 5 down here, 5 is equal to n. And then I'll use n as the number 5 in the formula. So it'd be 3 times 5, that would be 15, minus 2 is 13. So 13 is answer C. X1, n would be effectively the number 1 here, so let's put 1 into the formula. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 2 is 1. Oh, 1 goes to 1, that's a bit of a coincidence. And 8 as well, n equals 8. 8 goes into the formula, 3 times 8 is 24, minus 2 is 22. 22 is the answer to part E. So sometimes we'll have sequences of lists of numbers, just like we did in the previous question. Sometimes we'll have sequences written out by a formula, like we have here. Let's have a go at another one of those formula ones. Pause video and have a go at questions A to E. Okay, so x6, n is effectively the number 6 here, and 6 will be substituted into the formula, so 6 squared is 36 x2, 2 is effectively the value for n, so 2 will go into the equation, 2 squared is 4, the next numbers will be 25, 1, and 64. And let's have a go at one more with the uh, formula uh, to represent the sequence here, pause the video and have a go at these questions from a to e. Okay, so in the first one, n is effectively the number 6 here, so we'll have to replace n with the number 6. So it's 9 minus 2 lots of 6. That's 2 times 6 is 12, 9 minus 12 is minus 3. 2 is the value for n in the next one, so it'd be 9 minus 2 lots of 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. 5 would be the next value for n, so it'd be 9 minus 2 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10, 9 minus 10 is minus 1. 1 would be the next value for n, so substitute n with the number 1, that would be 7. And then 8 would be the last value of n that we need to plug in. 2 times 8 is 16, 9 minus 16 is minus 7. Okay, the next question is a very similar question, and it's just write down the first six terms in the sequence defined by xn equals 5n minus 2. Pause the video and give this question a go. Okay, we're going to want to find out the first six terms of a sequence. I effectively want to find out where x1 is, x2 is, x3 is, x4 is, and you can carry on there, 5 and 6. I want to find these terms in the sequence. And then once I know these six terms, then I can write them in a list. So the first term will be 5 times 1, minus 2. 5 times 1 is 5, minus 2 is 3. Next n value will be the num n value 2. 5 times 2 is 10, minus 2 is 8. The next n value is 3, and that will give me 13. The next n value is 4, and that will give me 18. The next n value is 5, and that will give me 23. The next n value will be 6, and that will give me um, 28. So the first six terms in the sequence go 3, then 8, then 13, then 18, then 23, then 28. Lovely, there we are. That's the first six terms of the sequence, and this is the formula for that sequence. As we go, another one then, a little bit more difficult, this one. Pause the video and give this one a go. Good, right, I hope you grabbed your calculator there, because if I'm working out this list of numbers, it's definitely going to involve decimals, so I'll definitely need my calculator here. So, when I'm working out the first term of the sequence, that'll be 1 plus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is... Oh, I know the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. 
Then when n is the value 2, I need to work out what the square root of 5 is. So the square root of 5 is 2.24. When n is the number 3, that will be the square root of 6 I've got to work out. And that would give me 2.45. The next one would be 4 plus 3 is 7, square root it, and that would give me 7. So that would be the square root of 7, which is 2.65. The next one would be the square root of 5 plus 3, that's the square root of 8. So the square root of 8 is 2.83. And the last one here will be the square root of 6 plus 3, that would be the square root of 9. But I know the square root of 9, the square root of 9 is 3. So there we are, the list of numbers, the first six terms in this sequence would be 2, 2.24, 2.45, 2.65, 2.83, 2.85, 2.86, 2.86, 3, and 3. There we are, that's our list of numbers, the first six terms in that sequence. Right, now is where we get on to iterative sequences. We've just been playing around with baby sequences so far. This is the uh, big kid stuff. This is the um, iterative sequences where we really have to start using some difficult formulas now. So write down the first six terms in the sequence defined by xn equals 2 times xn minus 1 plus 3. Now this n minus 1 here is all one big subscript. That's just n minus 1 subscripted on the x. Now in this sequence, we get the first term for free. We get the first term in the sequence is 2. So now I've just got to work out the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, and the sixth term. Get the first one for free. Now in this formula, I'm, I'm effectively using n equals 2 on this second calculation here. So I'm going to have to do 2 times xn, but remember n is the number 2 in this calculation, so it'd be 2 minus 1, add 3. Now we'll add 3 on the end, just don't, don't confuse the add 3 with this subscript, we're going to add 3 right at the end. Now if I do 2 minus 1, that will give me x1. 2 minus 1 is the number 1. So now I've got to do 2 times the value of x1, add 3. Now I know what the value of x1 is. The value of x1 was on this line above. It's the number 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2, add 3, that's 7. 7 is the next answer in this question. Now let's move on to the third number in the sequence. Effectively I'm using the n equals 3 term here. So I'm going to do 2 times x of n minus 1, uh, n is 3, so that would be 2. 3 minus 1 is 2, and then add the 3. Well, how do I know what x2 is? Well, x2 is the number 7. It was the answer to the question above. So it's going to be 2 times 7, 14, add 3, that would be 17. Moving on to the next row where n is equal to 4. So it's going to be 2, the formula uses 2 times x, n minus 1. 4 is our n value in this calculation, so it'd be 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then add 3 on the end afterwards. Now how do I work out what x3 is? Well, it's the calculation that I've just done. I've just worked out what x3 is. That was 17. So it's going to be 2 times 17 is 34. 2 times 17, whoops, 2 times 17 and then add 3, and that's going to be 37. The next one is when n equals 5, so I'm working out the fifth number in the sequence here, so I need to do 2 times x, 5 minus 1, that would be x4, plus 3. x4 was the number previously in the sequence, which was 37, so it would be 2 times 37, 2 times 37 is 74, and then add 3, that will give you 77. 
And the final term in the sequence that we want to work out, the sixth term in the sequence, well, that would be 2 times x of 5, because it's n minus 1, and then add 3. So the x5 term is the number 77. So it would be 2 times 77, that's 154. Add the 3 on the end, 157. So what's the sequence? It goes 2, then 7, then 17, then 37, then 77, then 157. Looks like it's always going to end with a 7, doesn't it? Or maybe maybe that's true. We can um, could probably work that out yourself. So um, there we are. That's the sequence here. And it's a pretty difficult sequence here because what we're effectively using each time we want to work out the next number, we have to use the previous number in the sequence. And that's what this thing here is effectively representing. Xn minus 1 is just basically a symbol for the last, the previous term in the sequence. Previous number in sequence. Oops, I've spelled that the other way around. Let's just write that again. There we are, that's it's spelled correctly. There we are. Okay, so there we are. So it's um it's using the previous number in the sequence to work out the next number in the sequence. So for example, when I had this 17 here, I then needed to, to work out 37, I needed to do 2 times 17 and then added on 3, and that got me the next number in the sequence. For example, from 77 to 157, from here to here, I had to do 2 times 77, and then add 3, and that got me up to 157. So this, this uh, rule here is a rule that uses previous numbers in your sequence. Maybe we can have a go with this uh, question here. Three is where you start, and then work out the next five terms in the sequence, please. Okay, let's give it a go then. So x1 is given to us for three. That's the number three. So our sequence starts with the number three in it. And then we've got to work out the next five on from there. So second term, third term, fourth term fifth term, and sixth term. So the second term. The second term is going to be in the formula. It goes 3 times xn minus 1. Now, if in this question n is the number 2, then it's going to be 2 minus 1 is 1. So it's going to be x1 minus 2. Now, minus 2 is on the end. Now, x1 was the number 3 previously, so it's going to be 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. So 7 is the next number in this sequence. To work out x3, that's when n is the value 3, we're going to be doing 3, because that's in the formula, times xn minus 1. Now if n is using the number 3 for this calculation, then it's going to be 3 minus 1 is 2, uh, so it'd be x2, and then take away 2 afterwards. Now, x2 was calculated previously as the number 7. So it's going to be 3 times 7 minus 2. Uh, 3 times 7 is 21, minus 2 is 19. So 19 is the third number in the sequence. For x4, we're going to use n equals 4 here for the calculation. So in the formula, it goes 3 times x4 minus 1, that would be 3 minus 2. Now the third number in the sequence is the number 19. So it would be 3 times 19 minus 2. I'll have to do that on the calculator. So 3 times 19 minus 2, that gives me 55. So 55 is the next number in the sequence. x5, we're now working out the fifth term in the sequence, where n is equal to 5. Um, it's going to be 3 times x, 5 minus 1 is 4 minus 2. Now we know the fourth number in the sequence is 55, so it's going to be 3 times 55, and then you take away 2, which will give you 163. 
That'll be the fifth term in sequence, and the final one will be 3 times x5 minus 2. You always use the one previous in the sequence. You always take away 1 from the sequence you're working out. Um, so you always take away 1 from the subscript of the term you're working out. Uh, so it'll be 3 times the fifth number in the sequence, which is 163. Take away 2. And then you get 484. So that'll be the last final term in the sequence here. So there we are. That's how you work out these kind of um, numbers in the iterative sequences. Now, what I'm going to show you now is the exact same question with a little trick on your calculator. You can actually, if you grab your calculator now, you can. Um, I can show you how to do this trick. Now your calculator might look slightly different to mine, but what I want you to do first is I want you to preload your calculator with the number 3. Because that's the first number in the sequence. Press the number 3 on your calculator, then press the equal sign. Now what you're effectively going to do is the number 3 is going to be the new input into your next term in your calculations, because it's going to be 3 times 3 minus 2. And this at the moment on your calculator is stored as the answer value. So what I want you to put on your calculator is this thing here. 3 times answer button minus 2. Because previously 3 was your answer. So what you're effectively doing here is using the answer button to represent the number 3 in this calculation. So 3 times answer minus 2 will give you 7, just like it would here. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 is 7. Now the neat little trick for this is that you don't actually have to type out this formula onto your calculator again. It's going to be 3 times 7 minus 2, but this again is still the answer value on your calculator screen at the moment. So all you have to do, don't type this formula back in, just press the equals button again. Just see what happens. Press the equals button again on your calculator and you'll get the number 19 appear. Then press the equals button again. You're going to be doing 3 times 19, the previous number on your calculator, and you will get 55. That was the next number in the sequence, wasn't it? To work out the fifth term in the sequence, you're going to be doing 3 times 55. That's still the answer value on your calculator screen. And that's going to give you 163. That was the next number in the sequence, wasn't it? And then x6, 3 times 163 minus 2. This is now the current answer value on your screen. So just press the equals button again, and you get 487, which was the previous sixth term on your sequence. So there we are, it's a neat little trick on your calculator, let's just replay it again. You start by preloading your answer with the first number in the sequence. The next thing you need to do is to write out your formula on your calculator screen, but don't write xn minus 1, substitute this with the answer. Answer the answer in the previous the answer to the number in the previous sequence will be what's used there. So you don't use xn minus one, you use answer button on your calculator down here. And then you press equals and you get the number seven. And you just keep on pressing the equals button. Don't retype your formula out, that'd be wasting your time. Just keep on hitting the equals button and you'll get 487 as the sixth term on your sequence. So what I'd like you to do, we're going to now do the rest of these questions using this cool little calculator trick. So here's the next one for you to try. Pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so hopefully what you've done first is you've typed 1 into your calculator because that's the first term in the sequence. And you want that to be the first answer value you're later going to use. The next thing you need to do on your calculator is to type out 2 times answer plus 5. And what that will do is it will use the previous number in your sequence 
as the current answer value, which is exactly what this uh, formula wants you to do. That's what iterative means. Iterative means use the previous answer to work out your new answer. So 2 answer plus 5, answer is currently the value 1, so we're expecting it to be 2 times 1 plus 5, and that will give us 7, lovely. Don't change anything on your calculator screen, just press the equals button again, and that will give you the third term in your sequence, because I still want to do 2 times answer value plus 5, but the answer value will now change to the number 7. So it'll be 2 times 7 plus 5, and that will give us 19. Don't change what's on your calculator screen, just press the equals button. The next calculation is going to be 2 times answer plus 5, because I'd like to use 19 as the next input into my formula. So press equals again there, and you get 43. The fifth term in your sequence is going to be 91. And the sixth term in your sequence is going to be 187. Lovely. By the time you've written out a few calculations for the first slot, don't bother with the last slot. Just write down the final answers. So we've got one more before we move on to the worksheet of questions. Pause the video and have a go at doing the first six terms of this sequence. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is put three as the input into your calculator to start the ball rolling. The next thing you need to do is to write out the formula that you're given to work, work out the numbers in your sequence. And you need to put that into your calculator, but using the answer button where you've got xn minus 1. Once you've done that, press the equals button and you'll get 4. Once you've done that, press equals again and you'll get 0. Oh yeah, because 2, 8 minus 2 lots of 4 will be, yeah, that'll give us 0. Then the next number will be 8. Then the next number will be minus 8. And then the next number... Oh, no, we've just done 5 there. Whoops, accidentally just done 5. OK, well, there we are. That's how we do these questions on our calculators, the iterative sequence questions. So now what I'd like you to do is come out of the video, go down into the description of the video, and click on the worksheet link. Have a go at those eight questions from the worksheet, and then come back to the video for us to go through the answers together. Okay, so this is question number one from the worksheet. So the first thing you need to do is plug in three into your calculator. So the first term in your sequence was three. Then onto your calculator it needs to go this formula, but where you have xn minus one, you want to use the previous number in your sequence, which was three. So you need to use the answer value, answer button, on your calculator, and that will give you 13. So, what did I say 13 for? 11. X3, uh, what you need to do there is don't change the calculator screen, just press the equals button again, because I want to do now 2 times 11 plus 5. 11 is currently my answer, so don't change anything, and you get 27. X4, just press the equals button again, 59. Just press the equals button again, and you get the next number, fifth term in the sequence of 123. And then finally, the final term in the sequence, x6, is 251. So the sequence goes 3, 11, 27, 59, 123, and 251. Sounds like I was reading out some bingo balls there, didn't it? Very high bingo balls. So there we are, that's the answer uh, to this question one. Not too bad, it's just mostly the calculator doing all the work for us. Okay, let's have a go at another one then. So it's uh, xn minus one and then add five on the side, then divide it by two. Okay, we'll pause the video and uh, make sure you've done this before. We now have a go at the answer. So the answer will be put six into your calculator screen first. So the first answer is six. Then what's going to happen is 6 will go in to this position here, 6 plus 5 divided by 2. Um, and the way we can get the calculator to do that for us is by using the answer value plus 5 and then divide by 2. And that would be 11 over 2. Uh, very welcome for you to do a decimals here. 5.5 would be a very good answer there. 
Then just press equals again, and you get 21 over 4. The fourth term in the sequence, just press equals again, you'll get 41 over 8. The fifth term in the sequence, just press the equals button again, 81 over 16. And then the final term in the sequence, just press the equals button again, 161 over 32. So the sequence goes ele so 6, 11 over 2, 21 over 4, 41 over 8, 81 over 16, and 161 over 32. There we are, that's the sequence here. Okay, let's move on to the next one then. Make sure you've paused the video and given this question a good go before we go through it. Let's go through it now. So first thing we do is we plug 1 into the uh, calculator first. Then we type out this formula. Make sure you've got a big square root around it. And then it's 2 times the answer value plus 3 because we're using the answer in our next calculation. And this would give us 2.236. Now, if you've got square root of 5 here, it's the S to D button that you need to press to turn your answers from exact answers into decimals. Let's just uh, press the equals button again to get the next number in the sequence, 2.73. Press the equals button again and you get 2.91. Press the equals button again and you get 2. Point, um, well, the 9 would round up the 6 to a 7, so 2.97. Press the equals button again and you get 2.99. And is that six terms? One, two, three, four, five, six. There we are, yes. So it's just pressing equals five times to get your six terms in the sequence. Right, this question is phrased a little bit differently, but actually, this question is exactly the same to question one. It's just written slightly differently where we've got the plus one on this side and then it's just xn on this side. The question hasn't changed at all. It's still using the previous term in the sequence because you can see here, this is effectively representing the next term in the sequence and this is effectively representing how many terms we've worked up to so far. So again, it's gonna go three and you still have to do exactly the same thing. It's still just two times answer value plus five, so 11. The next number in the sequence will be 27. Next number in the sequence will be 59. The next number in the sequence will be 123. We've got five there so far, so one more, please, 251. Same as the questions before, just slightly different notation. You have to be aware that the questions can be asked in both ways, but what you're looking for is for the subscript to always be one smaller than you have uh, the of the value you're currently trying to work out. And that will mean that you're using the previous number in your sequence. Okay, so make sure you've paused the video and given this one a good go. Six is where we're starting from here, and then it's going to be three plus six divided by five. Six is currently stored as the answer value in the calculator, so I could just do three plus answer divided by five, and I get 1.8. If you've got a decimal, if you've got a fraction appear there, just press S to D again, and you'll get yourself a decimal. Fractions are fine, though. If you put fractions as your answer, that's fine as well. 0 0.96 would be the next number in the sequence if you press equals. 0 0.792 would be the fourth term in the sequence. The fifth term in the sequence would be 0 0.7584. And the next term in the sequence would be 0 0.75168. So there we are, that's the answer. We didn't really have to write down much there, just a clever use of the calculator when it comes to iterative sequences. The next one, pretty difficult calculation to put in your calculator, but let's just still give it a go. I'm sure you're more than skilled in just trialing and improving your uh, syntax in the calculator. So three would be the first answer. Then type in seven plus five answer. Make sure everything is inside that square root symbol. 4.69 is the next number. Press equals again and you've got 5.52. Next number in the sequence and you've got 5.88. Next number in the sequence, the fifth number would be 6.03. And the next number in the sequence would be 6.10 because the six will round the nine up, the nine will round the zero up to one. So it would be 6.10 as the final answer in this question. 
Let's have a go at a slightly trickier one here. Slightly trickier because we've got two positions where xn is. Now, same as before then, 4 starts off the sequence, so type 4 into your calculator. And now what we want is this calculation here. In two locations, the answer button will be needed to be used. Press the fraction button first, and then you'll get answer plus 5 on the top. Oh, and then move, your, move to the bottom using the downward button. 2 minus the answer value will give you minus 4.5. That'll be the next number in the sequence. Next up will be 0.077. Uh, the next number in the sequence, pressing equals again, will be 2.64. Pressing equals again, and you'll get minus 11.94. And we've got five terms there so far. One more, please. Minus 0.4. Um, the 7 would round the 9 up, but the 9 would round the 4 up. So it would be minus 0.50. And there we are, that's the answer to this sequence here. Now the next one, the final question for this video, is a little bit of a sneaky one here. So what we have to do here is I want the first six terms of the sequence, so it's going to be the first term of 0, the second term of 1. Now I can't actually use the calculator here because I have to go 1 back in the sequence and then add it to a term 2 back in the sequence. So at the moment, my sequence is going 0, then 1. To work out the next number in the sequence, my formula tells me that I have to use the previous term in the sequence and then add it to the two previous term in the sequence, or the, the term in the sequence two values ago. So to work out the next number in the sequence, I need to do 1, add 0, which will give me 1 again. To work out the fourth term in the sequence, I need to work out, I need to add 1, the previous term in the sequence, add the 1 in the sequence 2 previous ago. So that'll be this 1 here. So 1 add the 1 will give you 2. Let's just do a few more then. The fifth term in the sequence will be add together the 1 previous in the sequence added on to the 1, 2 previous in the sequence. That'll be 1. So 1 plus 2, that gives you 3. So 3 would be the next number in the sequence. So add together the previous 1 and the 1, 2 previous ago. It's just basically always adding the previous two terms in the sequence together. So that'd be 2 plus 3 is 5. And actually, it's a pretty easy sequence to carry on. 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 8 plus 13 is 21, 21 plus 13 is uh, 34, 21 plus 34 is 55, and what you can see here is a sequence where you just add together the two previous terms in your sequence to get the next term in your sequence. And hopefully you know the posh name for this, this is the Fibonacci sequence. So this is the uh, very famous sequence that has all sorts of um, mathematical properties to it. When you get to A level, you'll see where the, some of the um, mathematical properties of Fibonacci come from. But yeah, an interesting sequence there using our iterative sequence notation. Lovely. Thanks very much for watching this video then. We're going to move on to solving iterative equations in the next video. So you've got to be really good at this topic to move on to the next stuff. Lovely. Thanks very much for watching.